In this video, I want to show you the most common questions that are asked in forklift operator or driver interviews and help you plan great answers that will get you a job driving a forklift. So let's start with the most common question that they like to ask in interviews, and that is simply, what times can you work? And to answer this question effectively, you need to do a few things. The first thing you want to do is be flexible. The more flexibility you can offer, the better. If you start restricting your time heavily, it's going to make you look like not a great hire. The next thing you want to do is be open-minded. If they ask about specific times, you want to try to show flexibility and be open to those times. The next thing you want to do is say yes. If they are asking you, can you work at this time? Can you work at this time? There is a reason why they've chose to ask about those times. And if you say no to those, it could be a problem for you. The next thing you want to do is show that you take your job seriously. The absolute worst way to answer this question is to immediately start listing all of the times that you don't want to work and say you can work all the other times. That's very negative and just gives them a list of reasons not to hire you. To actually get hired, what you want to do is focus on the best answers for a forklift driver. And this is the things that companies actually like to hear in the interview and actually things that companies do ask about so you can preempt that. So the first thing you could say if you're very, very flexible, and really the best answer would be to say, I can work the full range of site opening hours. So you don't have restrictions on your working availability and you will be happy to be scheduled for any work pattern. That would be the perfect answer. If not, we've got some other suggestions. You could say that you're open to day or night shifts. If you're open to both of those, perhaps the company pays more for night shifts, so you would be happy to work at those times. You could say a great phrase like you would increase your hours during peak times, so you're happy to work a normal work pattern, but when it comes to Christmas, where the business is perhaps very busy, you'll be happy to work more hours during those times. You could say that you're open to overtime if that's the case. You could say that you're happy to help out when needed and that you can usually work at short notice if that's something you're able to offer. And they often ask about, can you work at weekends? So when you're answering this question, you could say that you're open to working weekends as well, if that is the case. So use as many of those phrases as you can and focus on showing lots of flexibility and saying yes as much as possible and not talking at great length about the periods where you're not so available because that's a very negative thing to do. Focus on what you can do and not what you can't do and then you'll be really successful in this question. The next one you want to prepare for is what would you do if you damaged an item? And they can often ask this question and they're looking for one, the right answer and two, the right attitude. So to be successful, you want to be someone that takes responsibility, that doesn't conceal or try to hide their mistakes and that acts with integrity. So basically you're someone who knows what the right thing to do is and actually cares about damaging things that it's not okay and it's something you want to avoid and if it did happen that you will do the right thing so that's what they're looking for let's look at how you actually answer it and some traps that you must avoid so let's look at the structure of your answer so the first thing you say is i always work carefully and safely so when you're driving your forklift that is what you are focused on is safe and careful working then you say, I would take full responsibility and work to resolve the issue. So it's not a case of saying, well, it's been damaged, the manager will deal with it. It's not my problem, it happens. That's not the approach that you take. You say that I'll take responsibility, I was the person that caused that damage, and therefore I need to work to resolve the issue. The next thing you would say is any damage that ever occurs would be immediately reported. So you're reassuring them that you're not going to try and conceal it and you're going to go straight in and say, I was the one that damaged it and this is what damage was done. And so management can get involved and ensure that that problem is rectified, it's repaired, or that alternative orders are placed to ensure that the customers are still getting the products that they should get. And then you say, I would ensure I follow company protocol. So you're actually going to do what you're told to do. So you'll probably in your training be told what the actual procedures are to follow if something is damaged, or you may talk to your manager for advice about what the right thing to do is in this situation so that you're following the correct protocol. Let's look at the things you must avoid in your answer. So the first thing you don't want to do is give the impression you're not bothered. So when you're asked this question, you want to have some body language that indicates that you're shocked that there's been damage and that that's really not something that is okay to you. Don't give the impression that you would do your own thing. So tell them about all these things that you would do without actually saying that you would follow the company's protocols and procedures. Don't make an offer to pay for it. That's a mistake that people make. They say, well, if I damage something, I would just pay for it. 
because perhaps you've caused a very large amount of damage. I'm not saying that you would, but say you damaged an item that was 50,000. Could you just pay for that? Perhaps, perhaps not. That's not the best answer to go straight in with. Stick to what the company says should be done in that situation and not, again, making up your own things. Don't give the expectation that this is something that would happen or that this this is something you've done in the past. So don't use an example of when you damaged something in the past because that's not something you want to be marketing in your interview saying, oh, I've damaged things several times. Please give me a job working at your warehouse. That's not going to work very well. And then the worst thing you can do is suggest in any way that this isn't your problem. So some people may say that I've reported to my manager and then that's the end of the answer. That's not a very good answer. That's just basically saying I've caused some damage and someone else will have to deal with it. I'm just going to get on with my job and not worry about it. That's not a good attitude to have. So that's how you get through and ace this question. It's focusing on taking responsibility and saying what they actually want to hear. So stick to this and you will fly through this question if you're asked it. The next thing you should be prepared for is questions around safety. There's various questions they could ask, and you always want to be showing the same values. You want to be showing that safety is very important. If they ask you about prioritizing, prioritize safety. That's another good tip for your interview. So let's look at the questions that could come up about someone else doing something unsafe and what you do. Very simple answer. The first thing you say is that you've got a duty of care to your coworkers. So when you're working in an environment where there's forklifts moving around, it's potentially dangerous. And it's part of your job to ensure that everyone's safe. That is a shared responsibility. Yes, there will be managers who are overseeing safety in a larger sense, but every single employee is involved in making the workplace safe. And you say that. Then you would say that you would intervene to ensure safety, that you wouldn't see something unsafe and ignore it. It's not okay to ignore it. And then the next thing you say is that you would report and record the incident in line with the company's policy. So you don't have to go into immense detail about exactly what you would do because each company may have slightly different procedures. They'll have a different person to report to perhaps in a different structure. So you keep it general. Say that you'll report it and it'll be recorded in line with the company policy. You don't have to say what the company policy is. You might not know that at the interview stage, but you say that you will follow the correct policy and that's how you answer it. The next question that you definitely want to be prepared for is why do you want to work here? And obviously, I can't just tell you why you want to work at this company. What I can do, however, is give you lots of suggestions about things you might want to say in your interview and then you can put that together on the day or before to ensure that you have a strong answer. So if you want to actually start writing out an answer or take a bullet pointed um, list of things that you want to say, that would be a really helpful thing for you to do to get you really well prepared. So some things you could say is say that it's a perfect match for my skills and explain what your skills and experience are. Have you worked in warehouses for a long time? Have you got all of the appropriate forklift certifications? Have you done lots of training? in safety, in driving a forklift, these sort of things linked to your skills and what you like doing. You could say that you've had previous experiences um, as a customer and they've been really positive that you've bought from this company before. You think it's a good company with really high quality products and you're enthusiastic in joining the company for that reason. You might say that you've got the right type of forklift, you have a specific certification and that this company is operating the same type of forklift that you're really experienced with. That's one reason why this is the right place for you to be working, among other reasons. You could say that this is a growing industry so that you expect that if you join this company over the long term, you'll be able to grow with the business, that this is a good employer and maybe look for some evidence. So if you know people that work at the company, you don't have to name them, but you can say that people have told you that this is a good employer, that there's reviews that you've read about the employer that have been really positive. Things like that are good things to say that you're looking to be working for a growing company. And this is why this company is somewhere that you've chosen that perhaps the company has got a record of being an investor in people and that people have joined the company and had really successful careers. Maybe the company actually has an investor in people certification or it's won awards for being a good place to work. These are things that you could research. If that's the case, definitely mention those. If the company is known for having a great safety record, that's something you could mention. If you see that this is a place where you could gain new skills, that's something you could say. And a really good phrase to use is to say in your interview that I was really excited when I saw a job come up here. So when you saw the job advert, you're like, this is brilliant. I really want to work here. And that's a good phrase 
to start with to, to show your enthusiasm and that you really actually want the job. So I plan out an answer using as many of these as you can. These are things that you can say. And if you put that together, you have a really positive, good, strong answer, and that will help you get hired. The next thing I want to do is look at some quick fire questions. These are really simple questions that the company can ask that have simple answers. And I'm going to show you what the right answer is and also give you a hint of what the wrong answer is. So they do ask things like, have you got any holidays currently booked? And there is one simple answer to that, which is to say no. If you say yes to this, that could cost you the job. You don't want to be going for a job and saying, I can't start now. I've got lots and lots of holidays booked. Give me three weeks and then I might be able to start because they might need someone right now. And so if you're delaying your start date for a very, very long time, that's not going to be very good. They're asking this probably because they're looking for someone to start quickly. The next question that they might ask is, when are you able to start if successful? So if you get the job, when could you start? You may be able to start straight away. You may have some reasonable restrictions. And there's two different answers that you could give. So one of them is, if you're super flexible, is to say, I'm freely available to start at your earliest convenience. You're not dictating to them when you want to start. You're saying that you can start in line with when they need someone. The second way you could answer this is I can start immediately after completing my notice period. So if you're already employed and you've got to hand in your notice and work so many weeks before you can actually leave, then that's something that you would have to say and that's going to be expected. If they're inviting you to interview and they know that you've got a job, they know that you've got a notice period. So that definitely should not be a problem. So say your notice period and be really clear and transparent about it. The next question that they often ask is, can you work weekends? And remember, if they are asking this question, it's because they probably have in mind someone working weekends. So if they're asking, can you work weekends? They probably want someone who can work weekends and that's what they're looking to hire. So for this question, you really have to say yes. If you say no, that's your choice, but it may reduce your chance of getting the job. But then just saying yes is not a great answer. Let's make the answer even stronger. It's what they want, but let's go one step further. So you could say, I'm used to working weekends and understand that weekend working is important to the business. That just embellishes and makes the answer that little bit stronger. The next thing I want to talk about is what you need to prepare for your interview. So before you turn up at your interview, there's some things that you should prepare to make sure you're ready. So the first thing is have your work history perhaps bring your resume or your CV with you to the interview and you know exactly what jobs you've had in the past and when you work there because they could ask about that. Make sure you've got some proof of the types of forklift you can operate. So they may ask about that. And if you've got the proof at hand, that makes your answer stronger. So have your certifications and your licenses with you. They may want to photocopy those on the day. So having them is helpful. Um, they may ask about your identification. They may ask you to bring certain documents. And if you don't have them, they may actually say they can't interview on you on that day. So it's essential that you read the emails that they give you or any communication about inviting you to interview and you bring anything that they ask for. And then I would also recommend that before you go to the interview that you know the company's business, know exactly what they sell and know a bit about their history. So read their Wikipedia page, read their About Us page on their website and make sure you know the basic facts because if they ask about the company and you don't know, it really looks very bad. Before we finish, these are some great questions that you may want to ask at the end of your interview. So you could say something like, could you tell me um, about the next steps in your driver recruitment process? Because you're interested to know what actually happens after when do you find out if you've got the job? And it also shows that you're really interested in getting the job. The next question you could ask is, can you tell me more about the team and organization you have here at this location and how I could fit into the team? And that will let you learn more about your actual job. And it shows that you take an interest in your colleagues and that you're interested in working out exactly how your role fits in. And you can have quite a good discussion about that. Another one you might want to ask if you're quite ambitious or you're looking to gain extra qualifications or you are new to this job, you might say, what opportunities could there be for me to upskill and develop here over the next few years? Could that be that you want to learn to drive more than one type of forklift or gain additional skills or start taking on a little bit of extra leadership in the future? And that's a conversation you could have. You could ask them, what do you like most about working here? And you can share in their enthusiasm for that and be really positive. And then you may want to consider inventing one question on the day. So based on what's being said in the interview, they might say something that you want to follow up on or you want to get more information about. That might be a good one to make up. But be careful that you don't ask about transfers to another site. So 
they are hiring at this particular location. So if you start talking about, can I work? at another location six months from now, that's probably going to be a problem. They're trying to hire for this location and you're being interviewed by people that work there and trying to get a job at a different site. That's not very helpful to them. Then don't talk about taking holidays or asking about any time off at the interview or delaying your start date because you want to take holidays and don't try and negotiate your pay before you've even been offered the job. So that's how you ace an interview for a forklift driver or forklift operator. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe below and comment with the questions that you were asked in your interview. And finally, thank you very much for watching.